Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. Feel free, bro. Eh, te pido disculpas por quizás me pasé con alguna pregunta que hice en, en la conversación de tú y Daniela sobre sobre tu Okay, so Johan, good for him. He wants to apologize to Taylor, and hopefully he apologized already or will to Danielle for the last time they were all together. So let's see how this goes. He seems genuinely remorseful, but we'll see if he exhibits that to Taylor. <laughs> And Taylor just seems like a real stand-up fella. He seems really nice. He reacted, I thought, appropriately to the situation. So uh, Johan reached out to Taylor and said, hey, I want to apologize. Let's meet up and let's meet on your court, if you will, because you're a professional basketball player. We'll play basketball. They played basketball and Johan was willing to be a lot worse than <laughs> Taylor on the basketball court. And, uh, and Taylor, to his credit, is like, hey, Johan has some skill. Given what we see on these types of shows, there's usually a lot more bravado and toxic masculinity, so we're not seeing it here. Una pregunta es, Daniel en su relación, ella controlaba mucho, le gustaba controlar la relación. Okay, so it's edited, but that apology was very short, and I was hoping for some more there, like that Johan would fully apologize by saying the reason why I did that was because I was triggered or I was insecure or I felt jealous and when that happens I will go on the offensive and that wasn't fair. So given that he's just saying I'm sorry and he seems, I don't know, it's hard to know if it's genuine is the thing. He might, Johan, so I guess proof's in the pudding. Let's see how this conversation goes. I'm a little worried that he's just now going to bring it down a little bit, you know, the intensity of the attack on Talon or the intensity of Johan's mission to somehow humiliate Danielle or something. So now he's asking Talon about their past relationship. So there's a there's a healthy version of this and it could go in a healthy direction because uh, my conceptualization of the two of them is that Danielle and Johan have some work to do as a couple and as individuals. And my impression is that they do genuinely love each other, or they did at some point. And then when they got married and she came down to DR and he was like, okay, so when are we going to the States? And she's like, nope, not going to do it. And, you know, I commented about that. She was really dismissive to him about what he wanted. There's a a conversation if she didn't want to go back to the states they could have talked about it <laughs> but she was just like the way you would treat not even a child i mean you wouldn't even treat your own children that way i guess the way you would treat just a stranger it's like yeah i'm i'm not going back to the states you're just gonna have to deal with it it, it was really hurtful to him and there were other instances where she was doing that the meat shop that kind of thing and it was pretty bad. It was pretty hurtful, pretty awful. And Johan doesn't uh, communicate that very well, I don't think. I don't think he knows how to say, hey, you hurt my feelings. So then when she went back to the States for a while and then came back to DR, I think during that time he had reevaluated and said, look, if this is going to work, she's just going to have to, in, in his shortcut way, he thought, I'm going to have to be dominant. But th that wasn't the answer, <laughs> uh, clearly. So he decided to do that to put her in her place or something. She obviously was very hurt by that and didn't react well to that, understandably so. He went a little too far. I think it ran away with itself where he wasn't getting the response from her that he wanted and that hurt him more. And so there's more of a divide there. And so he has less regard for her. And so he's just really going after her. Now, there's another possibility that while she was gone, he just decided I'm done uh, because I never loved her and I always wanted to move to the States or I barely loved her or something. Who knows? But if it is true that Johan still somewhat loves Danielle and there's still a chance, there is a conversation here of just like, 
I feel like she's really controlling the way that she just said, look, we're not going back to the States. The way that she dictates where we live, the way she dictates everything uh, by business. It's bothersome and it's really a thorn in our side. Was she that way to you as a way of getting a conversation going so that maybe Taylor would be like, well, you know, she does, but this is what I did or this is how I saw it. Maybe that'll help Johan. Or is this just Johan trying to subvert, subversively attack Taylor and put him down? See, she's not a submissive woman, so for that reason, she likes to have control as much as she can. <clears throat> yeah, that's one way of putting it. That's not the way I would put it. She's not a submissive, as if that, that's the main dimension, right? That you have people, women, who are uh, submissive, and then you have on the other end of the spectrum, they want a lot of control. People will often frame it this way, right? They'll, you know, type A personality or something, or strong-willed people. There's a difference between being strong-willed and assertive and active and having preferences and bulldozing other people. There's a huge difference between those two. I, for myself, am very particular about how I live my life. Just ask my wife about things. <laughs> like, if I was at the dentist the other day uh, because I've been having some trouble. I had a crown put on anyway, so I, I had to go to the dentist three times in the same month. And the uh, first time I was, and every time I go to this dentist, I notice the music that they play. You know, the the musical choices at a dentist office is very important because as a customer, as a patient, you're just often sitting there with your mouth open for half an hour. And sometimes they'll talk to you. <laughs> they'll have like a one-way conversation, but you're just sitting there often listening to music, right? So the musical choice is very important. And I find that some places, restaurants, dentist offices, they don't really understand how to pick a Pandora station and they'll pick these really niche things. You know, obviously you wouldn't want to play like death metal at a dentist office. One out of a hundred people will totally dig it, but there's going to be a whole bunch of people are going to be like, uh, now, from my understanding is most people don't even notice the music that's playing. Uh, my wife often, I'll say like, oh, that song. And she'll be like, huh, I didn't even know music is playing. I mean, my wife's into music too, but maybe I'm particularly. Anyway, I'm very. this is me giving an example of how particular I am. So then uh, the second appointment I was at, I noticed they were playing a lot of hair metal from the late 80s, early 90s. You know, your Bon Jovi's, your Rat, your uh, Vixen, <laughs> your Motley Crue, your Def Leppard, your Skid Row, uh, those kinds of bands. And uh, some of those tracks I like and some of them I hate. There's, a, there's kind of a transition uh, where some of those bands, like, I don't know, sorry for the Motley Crue fans out there, I, I don't think there's a single Motley Crue song I like. Bon Jovi is kind of rough to listen to for me. I know that's awful. But give me a Rat song, give me a Skid Row song, give me early Def Leppard, Pyromania, that kind of stuff. Give me older, what I consider older, like pour some sugar on me. Just like, ugh, just the worst. Art is art. People can like what they want. But anyway, so I was really kind of being in my particularness and going like, ugh, some of these songs are great, but some of them are... Uh, but, you know, it's a dentist office. So I just had a conversation. Uh, not like I was like, hey, you need to change channel. I was just like, oh, hair metal day. And the hygienist or the, not the dentist dentist, but the other person, she says, oh yeah, the receptionist, uh, she gets to choose the music on Thursday afternoons because it's the end of the week and, and maybe they don't work on Fridays. And it's sort of like, instead of playing more bland music, we can play something more hard hitting like hair metal. <laughs> and she, the receptionist is around my age, I think, and so grew up with that kind of music. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, that's fun. And we were kind of laughing about that with the receptionist and da-da-da. Anyway, so then uh, I had a, another appointment, and it was Thursday afternoon, and they weren't playing hair metal. They were playing, like, really not preferred music to me. Stuff like Bad Country. Some Country is great. Willie Nelson, that kind of thing. But Some Country is just, like, it really just aggravates me. <laughs> I don't know. There's something wrong with me. There's some music. I'll hear a like I'll be in a like a clothing store. I'll just be like, oh, why are you playing that terrible EDM stuff? Like we're not in a. It's, 
It's 11 in the morning. We're not at a club. We're not at Ibiza. Like, calm down. Turn it down. There's so many other musical choices, you know? You can never go wrong with classic rock, in my opinion. Or, you know, like easy listening 80s. It's just, you can't go wrong. I, it's, it's just, maybe that's just because of my age or something. Or, or jazz or just anything. Other than that, or, and the other... But the Pandora selection algorithm was weird because not only were they playing a bad country, but they're also playing like Muppet movie songs and not pleasant ones. You know, there's some Muppet, not old Muppet movie, you know, like um, Rainbow Connection, but like the more recent Muppet, uh, 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 that, that, that's the way you get. Anyway, and so it wasn't terrible, but I commented on it because I was like, hey, um, I thought Thursday was um, hair metal day, right? And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, you remember that. That's, that's, uh, you're very observant. And, uh, well, we didn't turn it on because it was a short week, and I guess we forgot. And I'm, I'm secretly hoping that they'll switch it over to hair, hair metal because I, I don't like listening. Anyway, so that's an example of how particular I am. <laughs> I'm very particular. But I'm not... Dominant, I hope. I'm not controlling, I hope. If someone wants to listen to something and that's their thing, then I'm not going to bulldoze them. I'm not going to consider my desires to be superior or more important to someone else's. Um, In those instances, I was actually trying to help the receptionist get what she wants. (laughs) I'm on some time, you know, and I was going to take a guess and say that someone had just forgotten the algorithm on Pandora and run itself into some weird musical corners. So I didn't suspect that anyone was was going to lose if we switched to the receptionist playlist anyway. <laughs> so there's a difference between having preferences and being controlling. So with when Johan and and Taylor are talking about Danielle and she you know she's not submissive, she is very assertive, that kind of thing. And I wish that people also included this note because you can be controlling without having preferences. So there are two different two different things. You can be very preferential about certain things, like me and music and dentist's office. And you can also there's another dimension of how dominant or how superior or how controlling you are uh, regarding that, right? So I can I can have a high high level of preference about something, but exhibit no control or no dominance or no superiority. I can assert it the way that I did. I just would say, oh, I thought Thursday was uh, the receptionist. Her name is Stacy. I thought, oh, I thought it was Stacy's hair metal day. Uh, You know, what's going on? And and, and that's all I said. (laughs) And that just started a whole conversation about that. And then I think they eventually did switch it. But anyway, so, or you can have the opposite. You can be very controlling and really not have any preferences. You just need to be in control. So I wish people talked about it along those lines. Hey, deserving listeners. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we are faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. And some of you might even be facing a tough choice right now. Well, for me, I like to fully explore all the options. That usually helps me to feel more confident moving forward. And sometimes it really helps to talk with someone and get their perspective and maybe their wisdom. And of course, therapy can help with this. I never planned on specializing in this area when I started out as a therapist, but over time, a lot of clients have come to me when they are facing tough choices that they're having a hard time figuring out what to do. Well, one option worth exploring is BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, it's worth giving a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient and suited to your schedule. And also you can switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Kirk today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Kirk. Ella no es una mujer sumisa. Entonces, por esa razón, le gusta... Oh, so my whole point was with Danielle, I think for her, it's not necessarily that she just wants to control. It's that she is scared of losing people. She's scared of being dominated, and like she has in the past. And she is having a high preference for attachment and security. That's what she's trying to, to a, attain, but she's using controlling behaviors to get there, which is a different sort of way of looking at it, right? It's not that she's just controlling. It's that she is using control to get something that she should want, that everyone wants, that Johan wants. She just needs to do something else. Muy difícil. 
Do you feel like you don't have any control over your relationship with Danielle? So that's good. I was worried that Johan, as a lot of people on these shows and in life, will say uh, in a much more black and white way of like, no, I never feel in control. But he is differentiated enough to say, well, sometimes yes, sometimes no, because that's probably truth. True. El hombre tiene su rol de hombre, la mujer tiene su rol de mujer. Daniel es una persona que le gusta hacer lo que ella quiera y que le gusta hacer que se haga lo que ella diga. Yo lo veo una falta de respeto a la relación. Tú vas a hacer lo que tú quieras, entonces ¿para qué te casaste? Yeah, it's unfortunate. We've seen this before with other couples where they, they become real hyper-focused on control and dominance who's going to be in control, who's wearing the pants in the family, so to speak. Instead of understanding why people try to assert control, why they assert power, it's often, in my estimation, because they are trying to establish attachment. They're trying to establish attachment security and non-rejection. And they believe that this is the way. Or they're trying to establish self-worth by trying to exhibit that they're in control or they're better or something. Or they're trying to avoid being abused or abandoned by controlling. If they control, then that's, in their mind, the opposite of lacking control and thus being subject to victimization. So when you understand that, then you understand how to move forward, both for yourself and if your partner is exhibiting this. So this, this notion of just like, who's going to be in control, who's going to be dominant is really just a runaway train that will end in breaking up in all likelihood. Relationships bring sacrifices on both ends. Yeah, and this is perhaps the best advice or perspective that we could expect from people in situations like this. And maybe this will get the ball rolling in a better direction. But unless you understand what's going on for people, the behavior is just going to either reemerge the controlling or some other way of dealing with the attachment insecurity, you know, maybe avoidance or cheating or drinking or some other or passive aggressive behavior. So I, I just really wish that people would understand that about themselves because it's so helpful to understand that. And when you don't understand it, then you don't know what to fix. You don't know what to address. It's it's just a recipe for disaster. And most people don't understand it. A lot of clinicians don't understand it. Sometimes I'm with a group of colleagues and who aren't really close to me. I guess people who are close to me know my thing, but or they share my thing. But for a lot of people in my field, the way they talk about attachment and interpersonal relationships, that I put that in quotes because in psychology, there's this tendency to use these kind of, I don't know, clinical phrases for things that I feel like should have less clinical phraseology around it. Anyway, they'll talk about attachment and interpersonal relationships as this kind of ancillary thing to psychology, this ancillary thing to functioning and, and disorders. And I'm always like, that's the central thing often <laughs> in people's lives. Now, if someone has schizophrenia or PTSD or something, then it, it might not have anything to do with attachment and relationships and love and security. But um, a lot of the things that people come to therapy for, a lot of the things that plague people's lives and complain about have to do with that depression, anxiety, sometimes PTSD. Uh, the reason in my estimation, why people even go to therapy often is because they want a secure attachment with a therapist to help them with whatever they are wanting help with. So, and the secure attachment within the therapy is the often, sometimes the primary driver of healing and help and change for the client. So I just, it's just, um, now I could just have it all wrong. <laughs> There's no way of demonstrating that my overall paradigm is somehow more accurate than others. I just, I just see so much suffering, and I just can't imagine that Johan and Danielle are going to not suffer moving forward 
if they don't understand this. If they just say, let's compromise, that does not address the underlying issue and the problems will either reemerge or they'll just emerge in a different way. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.